I'm Tannis Foltz and I'm going to be talking about the healing power of public art. And just to give a background of the project, I was first hired here to teach criminology. And notice that in a 600 page text, there was only one page dedicated to women's issues. Well, I had researched prostitution and victimization as a grad student, so I thought, what is wrong with this picture? So I developed the women and crime course that I teach today. And over the years, I have heard many, many confessions of personal abuse by my students. But the real turning point for me came in 2013. I was actually on sabbatical, but I came back to campus to see this celebrating our students' research conference. And what I noticed was that over two-thirds of our student papers focused on their own personal victimization. And that really blew my mind. So I made the decision right then and there that Women's and Gender Studies would sponsor the Clothesline Project beginning in fall 2013. We received funding through ODEMA for t-shirts and art supplies, and they've been very, very supportive ever since. So what is the Clothesline Project? It's a stunning visual exhibit of trauma. It was first created in 1990 by a group of women to break the silence about violence, similar to the AIDS quilt in 1987. But the clothesline represented women's work. While hanging out laundry, women would often discuss taboo subjects with each other, thus airing their dirty laundry. And so why did they use t-shirts? Well, they're comfortable. They break down our defense mechanisms. And so trauma victims can anonymously share their abuse through graphic images and texts written on t-shirts. So the goals of the Clothesline Project are these. To bear witness to survivors, to assist in their healing process from trauma, to educate about the extent of violence against women, and to provide a supportive network. The colors of the t-shirts represent different kinds of violence, and I will just let you read these. So the evolution of the project is such that it really didn't start out as a research project at all. It was just an effort to allow students to speak out against violence that they had either experienced or had witnessed. So every fall, we invite the students to make a t-shirt and speak out against violence. We began to add comment cards to exhibit viewers so they could voice their responses about how they felt about the exhibit. And we added maker's cards so that students who were making the t-shirts could talk about the process of what that meant to them. And over time, these texts became really valuable data for a research project, and I decided to create a research project out of the data that we had already gathered. Well, we have work-study students who work in the Women's Center, and they're not very busy most of the time, except during the Clothesline Project, and also during the Celebrating Our Students Research Conference. So we enlisted them to help photograph the t-shirts and then transcribe the narratives on the t-shirts and they have kept account of the t-shirt colors that are made every year. And one of the things that has really stood out is that those t-shirts that signify rape and sexual assault, the red, pink, and orange shirts, are always, always the highest in number. And the yellow shirts that signify physical abuse are second, and the blue and green shirts signifying child sexual abuse and incest come in a tight third. Over 700 t-shirts have been made since 2013 until 2021. So I conducted content analysis and narrative analysis to develop some themes and found six overlapping categories. The first one is rage and resistance. The second one is giving voice to one's abuse and to one's anger. And this is considered release and therapy and healing. The third is empowerment and agency. And really you can see how the second and third overlap with each other. The fourth is raising awareness. And this is exactly what this project does. Developing empathy for LGBTQ relationships. And finally, connecting, bonding, and supporting others. So here's a picture of some of our students working on making their t-shirts in the Women's Center. This must have been the last day because there are usually just a few people making a t-shirt at a time. It's kind of a quiet space in the Women's Center.
So here are some of our students getting their picture taken after installing the clothesline exhibit. They're very proud of their work, and as you can see, the colors are vibrant and really visually attractive, and so it attracts people's attention to want to read them. So I use the trauma and art therapy literature as a framework for my research. The trauma literature reveals the importance of testifying, of acknowledging that one has been hurt, and giving voice to that trauma is really the first step towards healing. And the art therapy literature shows that art allows people to tell their stories through their art without speaking directly about themselves. So students can recount an abusive event by decorating a t-shirt. They're really testifying, though they remain completely anonymous. And this is a really, really important part of the project, too. So many students don't want to put themselves out there like one year, but they'll wait until the next year and say, now I'm ready. I'm ready to be a part of this project. So here are some pictures of the shirts. Rage, do you feel like a man when you push her around? Do you feel better when she falls to the ground? Here's one giving voice. Don't be afraid to speak out and say no. And this is childhood molestation. Resistance, love is hugs, not slugs. Release, I have been set free. I am not a victim, but a victor. And we love to see those. And these are sexual abuse t-shirts. And I love to see this middle one. She is a warrior, not a victim. This person is totally reclaiming her power. She's saying, I'm not a victim anymore. Agency and empowerment, I'm a survivor, fighter, thriver. I'm going to make it. Again, total agency and empowerment. Child sexual abuse, help a friend. Empathy for LGBTQ relationships, let all live. We're all human. And testimonials. Connection and bonding is the first theme. Walking into Savannah Hall to observe the shirts gave me unexpected feelings as if I wasn't alone. And then I shared a similar story with other women. This felt like a connection, a bond, a sisterhood. I love this. Raising awareness, the Clothesline Project is a great stepping stone in getting the message out about violence and sexual assault. Healing, the Clothesline Project forced me to put myself out there, let my testimony be heard. It has opened doors and allowed the healing for many. Support for others, this project has inspired me to continue to use my voice to help victims and educate others about rape. My silence helps no one, but maybe my voice can help. The Clothesline Project has proven to be a catalyst for transformation and healing, and we intend to offer it for many years to come. So please, faculty, encourage your students to participate in the Clothesline Project when we invite people to speak out against violence next fall. And remember the healing power of public art. Thank you so much for allowing me to share my research with you.